Hi there! This video will show you how to design on a mailer box die line template. It will help you navigate the design process by showing you how to set up your document and provide tips for adding design elements. When you open your die line template, the first thing you want to do is to make sure that your document is in the CMYK color mode, the color system used for printing. To do this, go to File in Illustrator's menu bar and select Document Color Mode. From there, click on CMYK and make sure there is a check mark next to it. Once you've done that, you're ready to begin designing. When designing, it can be helpful to refer back to the mailer box orientation guide to ensure you're adding your elements in the correct location and orientation. When you open the die line template file from PacMojo, you should see two layers, die line and artwork. Since the die line layer won't get printed, make sure that you add all artwork to the artwork layer to ensure the design is printed on your box. Keep your artwork layer under your die line layer to ensure that you can see the die line outlines while you're adding your designs. If you don't see the separate layers, it is best practice to create a separate layer for your artwork. You can create this layer by clicking on the new layer button in the layers menu and renaming it accordingly. You can move the artwork layer under the die line layer by dragging and dropping your artwork layer to go under your die line layer. With your layers ready, you can begin adding elements to your die line template. There are a couple of tips that can help ease your design process. When scaling elements on your design template, holding the shift key while changing the dimensions of your element will allow it to maintain its aspect ratio you can also hold the shift key while rotating elements. This will allow you to rotate to certain precise orientations and degrees. Holding the shift key while clicking on various elements will also allow you to select and alter multiple elements at once. To center elements, select the element you're trying to center along with the lines of the die line just left and right, or above and below them. Then go to the Align window, which can be located under the Window menu, and distribute the objects by clicking the two Distribute Object in Center buttons. To show you several guidelines for adding elements during your design process, let's recreate this PacMojo box. As you can see, this box has a different background color on the inside and outside of the box, as well as logo and text elements on several panels. Let's begin with the background color. To add a background color or design to your box, you will have to ensure that it goes beyond the die line to account for any bleeds during the print process. You don't need to create a shape that matches the die line exactly. Instead, you can just create a rectangle by using the rectangle tool in the toolbar on the left. Drag the shape out to ensure that it covers over the box and change it to your desired colors. If you wish to have the entire interior of your box be the same color, you will have to make sure to also change the background color of these two panels. As you can see, according to the orientation guide, these two panels will actually be the interior of the box after assembly. Since the design we are trying to emulate has these side panels as the lighter background color that matches the exterior, we won't have to change it here. If you are using a dark colored background, you may want to change the color of your die line such that you're actually able to see the die line outline. If you don't have a background color but have text or assets at the edge of the die line, you should also make sure to have this bleed over as well. To add the logos, it's best to use SVG files for the best results as they will maintain high quality and resolution even after being scaled. Make sure that you have access to the original SVG source files. Add your SVG file to your die line template. You can make sure that all elements of your logo move together by grouping them, which can be done by going to the object menu and selecting group. Then you can move and scale them to the appropriate panels. As we only want the logo without the text elements for the side panels, we will copy and paste only those elements, change the colors to gray, and place them in the correct panels. Then, by referring to the orientation guide, we can see that they will be in a different orientation, thus we will need to rotate them to match the orientation. Then we will use the align tools to ensure that they are in the center of the side panels. Though our design does not have image files, 
We'll add this image file on the inside base of the box to show you how you might add PNG or JPEG files. Begin by dragging them into the template file. You'll want to ensure that they are at least 300 ppi for a good quality output. You can do this by going to the Links window, which can be located under the Window menu, and clicking on the image file. The specs and information provided here should include your image's PPI. As we can see, by scaling it to a smaller size, we can ensure that it is more than 300 PPI. When you add images to your design, you will have to provide us with the original image files to avoid any missing files during the print process. This can be done by embedding the files or sending the linked files to us separately. Embedding files allows you and us to only deal with one file, but it will also increase the file size. To embed image files, go to the Links window, select all your image files, which you can do by holding the Shift key while selecting them and clicking the Menu button in the top right corner. From there, select Embed Images. Do note that embedding images will increase your file size, which can potentially slow down the speed of your Illustrator app. If you prefer not to embed your files, make sure to provide us with the exact files when submitting your completed die line to avoid any delays and issues during the print process. To add text elements, go to the Text tool in the left toolbar. Once you have typed out your text, feel free to change any properties and orientations of the text to make sure they are printed the way you envision. For example, to ensure that this text is in the correct orientation, we will have to rotate it to match the orientation guide. Once you're happy with your text elements, you will need to vectorize your text to avoid any missing font files during the print process. Once the text is vectorized, you won't be able to edit the text with the exception of size, orientation, and color. So we recommend that you create a copy of your Illustrator file here, such that you have an editable version of your design which you can come back to and make modifications if needed. To vectorize the text, select all text elements, go into Type in the Illustrator menu, and select Create Outlines. Now your text has all become vectorized shapes. Finally, if you have any enhancements such as spot UV, foil stamping, embossing or debossing, you'll have to indicate them on a separate layer so that we know which elements to perform these enhancements on. Start by creating a new layer and labeling it with your type of enhancement. Then select the elements you would like to enhance. As an example, let's say I would like to have foil stamping on all elements on the top of our box. Start by copying the element. Then select the original element and paste it exactly in front. By using Illustrator's Paste in Front command, by going to the Edit menu and selecting Paste in Front, you can ensure that it will line up with your designs. Repeat this with all enhanced elements. At the moment, they are still in the artwork layer. We can quickly move them to the Enhancements layer by selecting them all, dragging this small square seen next to the artwork layer, which refers to the elements selected at the moment within this layer. You'll want to drag the square to the Enhancement layer to move all selected elements to this layer. Finally, select all elements in the Enhancement layer and change them to one solid color so that it is clear to our team which elements you would like enhanced. Just like that, we have recreated this design on our die line template ready for printing. You can double check your work by hiding layers to check that all elements are in the correct layers. Happy designing!